Boom. What's going on, guys? Zach Evnish from ZachStrength.com and the Underground Strength Gym in New Jersey. And i um, going to do a little bit of Q&A. And a buddy of mine actually sent me a, uh, hey, it is my buddy. <laughs> a buddy of mine sent me a email, great email, and I'm going to address it. I think it's pretty cool. Good timing. And of course, I'll take some questions. And uh, before I forget, we've got the 31-year training anniversary sale. I started training in June of 1989. So June of every year becomes just a, a super nostalgic and important time in my life. And so I like to hold a, a big sale every time June comes around. So because uh, I started training in 1989 and I was 13, here I am age 44, 31 years, we have a 31% off discount. And um, you guys can go to my website, go to zackstrength.com. You'll see the you'll see the post and the discount code. Even the certification is discounted. So let's get into it, guys. Here, here's a question from my buddy. Um, he started getting you know into training. He picked up the Encyclopedia of Underground Strength. He's been uh, he's part of the Strong Life Brotherhood. He's fired up. He's following the training from my Gladiator Strong program inside Train Heroic. He's fired up, and he said, "Man." I want to take people on this journey with me in getting in shape. He's like, I'd like to build a gym, build an online community. And um, he is like a tech guy. He helps uh, fitness owners build their email lists. He helps people build websites. Uh, but he wants to do something <clears throat> where he's, you know, with people. You know, the, the human experience or uh, interaction, it heightens the human experience. I remember Tony Robbins saying that. 20 years ago when I went to his uh, Unleash the Power Within, he's like, man, doing things in person, these seminars, it just heightens the human experience. And so I love that idea. So he, here would be my advices to him, as Arnold would say. Number one, I never advise anybody to just go in and open up a gym and you know uh, put yourself in debt or even you know invest your cash, whatever, into all this equipment, lease, time, and then roll up the garage doors and say, all right, I'm open, who wants to come? You've gotta prove it to yourself before you can prove to uh, anybody else that you can run the business. So for example, somebody tells me they wanna open a gym, I'm like, all right, have you trained people out of your garage? Have you partnered up with the local recreation department? Have you worked with um, the local school system, even community college that maybe um, they hire people to teach uh, exercise group, fitness classes, so on and so forth. <clears throat> if you haven't done that, if you haven't proven that you could have 20 people training with you for at least three months, then you're in a dangerous place trying to open up your own facility. And so this is what, I, this is what I'm saying to do. I go back to those early business seminars I would hold with coaches. Uh, that's where Operation Thunder was recorded, which is on sale, by the way. Thanks to everybody for jumping in. And <clears throat> I, I had this message to them, two messages, two messages, two messages. <laughs> Number one, live on nuts and berries. Don't put yourself in debt getting all this crazy expensive equipment that is inside of a you know Division I university that's donated and purchased through donors. You don't, you don't need to start there. You don't even need to go there, number one. Number two, um, Go with the philosophy and go with the business structure of low hassle, high profit. That means if you look at my gyms, we're small. My one facility is 960 square feet. Not by choice. We need to be bigger. We probably need to be 2,000 square feet. My other facility is 2,200 square feet. And then, sorry guys, we're just gonna we're gonna bump it up here. And that being said, the you know, the first location I had was 1,650 square feet, something like that. And then we've got my first, first location, my parents' garage and backyard, which I speak about often. And training, training local athletes out of the garage, out of the backyard, it proved to me, forget about proving to everybody else, although everybody else was calling me an idiot, so, you know, what is Zach doing? He can't do this. It proved to me that I can do this, that I can... I can create this business. I can run this business. I don't need I don't need anything 
huge. And so at the time, where were people renting their spaces? In expense, they were renting them in uh, strip plazas, in like places near all these supermarkets. A lot of foot traffic, but crazy expensive. I remember I wanted to go in, opening up the first spot, and I said to myself, all right, if my rent is 1500 bucks a month, I don't want to break even because there's no such thing. I might earn 1500 but then I've got all these you know, quick expenses and hidden expenses that happen. So I, I got up to $3,000 a month out of my garage. That, to me, felt like, okay, you have earned the right to go and rent that facility. And so to my buddy who wants to start something, start a gym, you never jump right into the gym. Number one, you know, in the world of business, you need to be on social media. That's the bottom line. Number two, you test everything and you research heavily. So, for example, there's my man DJ, DJ Orlando. For example, when I opened up my facility in the town that I live in, I live here 10 years, we opened up seven and a half years ago, I remember having a real good vibe. I was like, man, there's no strength and conditioning facility here, there's nothing nearby. Um, all of these small uh, stores, uh, <clears throat> they post up signs for other businesses, they're very supportive. And so when I opened up, I opened up after Hurricane Sandy, and I just I thought I was gonna I thought I was going to be kind of like this this beacon of light for the athletes in this town because it's a sport oriented town. And I learned quite <laughs> the quite the opposite. I learned I couldn't even give it away. I tried uh, giving it away to any athlete who experienced uh, their family lost their home or had some sort of um, you know, uh, negative experience from Hurricane Sandy. And a lot of people lost their homes. You know, people lost jobs. People had businesses. It was, it was pretty scary. I reached out to every sport coach and every guidance counselor and administrator at the high school multiple times. They never even said no thanks. <laughs> Here I was, a guy that lived in town, opened a business in town. I was like, whoa, I thought I was going to get support. Then I went to these, some of these small businesses where a lot of athletes would go to see if I could put up a flyer in their window. Because I had seen many other people put up flyers, I went to the Dairy Queen, which I was at like almost every other day with my kids. And I was like, all right, man, I'm probably spending a few hundred dollars here every but the way my kids are eating ice cream, bringing their friends, taking everybody here. And the guy was like, ah, oh, no, you know, really, I don't really know if we could do that. We try not to do that. And I'm like, dude, You've got a thing up for like a local show, a local this, a local that. And I realized, I was like, shit, man, I'm on my own. Nobody's coming to save me. Nobody's coming to support me. I remember the local pet food store put my thing up in the window. And then like two days later, it was gone. And I was like, wow, interesting. I come here once a month, once every three weeks, buy dog food, buy treats, buy this, buy that. They can't even put a poster up. So sometimes we want to be this beacon of light in our community. We want to do good. We want to bring goodness and fitness and health and love and happiness. But then the people sometimes don't like that. You know, we might call that lack mentality where they don't like seeing other people who are successful. I'm not really sure what the exact scenario is. But what you've got to do is strategically get yourself into a place where there's some convenience factor located. That's going to be a big deal. Why do I talk about that? Because one of our locations is in a martial arts building. We've got wrestling, boxing, jiu-jitsu. The majority of our athletes are wrestlers. They train and then go to wrestling. Uh, our adults, most of them, are the parents of the wrestlers. When their kid is wrestling, they come in and train. And then we have some of the people from the jiu-jitsu school. It's convenient. It's right there. It just makes it easy for things to happen. Not every town is going to support you, especially if you're not known in that town and you didn't grow up in that town. And so food for thought, when you're building a business, you've got to run many tests and you have to prove to yourself that you could make it happen. And there's many ways to make it happen without starting off with a facility. Start off in that town, partner up with the local recreation department, Partner up with the booster club of the schools. Contact the sport coaches to see if you could help assist during summer sport camp. Um, if you're training adults, 
then you've got to get in with any of the programs that work with adults, and the recreation department can do that. And so, guys, being a strength coach, it ain't easy. Running a business, it's never easy. As my buddy Joe DeSena says, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. And so you got to be... Uh, you have to have agility. I always speak about it. You need mental agility, business acumen agility, financial agility. You got to be ready to pivot and change with the times. I definitely think online is very big, but nothing replaces the, the human interaction. You know, we are on our the beginning of our fourth week training um, athletes outdoors at my gym. And uh, many of them were following our online programming, or at least their parents signed up for it and paid for it. But let me tell you, they are getting infinitely more out of the in-person stuff because nothing replaces the in-person stuff. Nothing replaces Coach Zach Evanesh, Coach John Smith, Coach Susie Smith being there, giving you technique feedback, helping you with the small details that make big differences, okay? And also, guys, I got to really emphasize, I've been hammering these videos on about what it takes to be a great strength coach because a lot of people think it's hey, it's all the same. But you see, we pay attention, when we're great strength coaches, we pay attention to these tiny details that make big differences. Oh, he's benching, but why is one wrist bent? Why is the other one straight? We're going to lighten it up and we're going to fix that. We're also going to get a little bit more grip work. Oh, maybe it's lack of shoulder stability. Lack of posterior upper body strength. The shoulders and lats are weak. The bar keeps shaking. Oh, maybe this kid shouldn't even be benching. Let's go for four to six weeks of dumbbells and kettlebells and really work that grip, work that wrist stability. Oh, he can't do a good body weight squat. He can't sit back. Is it just that their ankles have poor mobility? How are you going to work on that ankle mobility? How are you going to work on the movement prep? What exercises do you need to do to strengthen his or her posterior chain to give that kid the ability to do things like squats and good lunges? These little details. You're, it's like that movie, A Beautiful Mind. He's always writing the numbers up on like the windows. Everything he sees is, is the numbers. When you're a great strength coach, everything you see is the human body. And the human body is pretty darn complex. And so it takes a lot of time to figure things out. And guess what? The best coaches, they train. They know what it feels like to get under that bar. They know what it feels like to be injured, to come back from injury, to work around injuries, to rehab themselves. The best strength coaches are not just reading everything. They lift everything. All right, guys, get on over to ZachEvanesh.com. Get over and check out the 31-year training anniversary sale. Today's Tuesday. I believe the anniversary sale is ending Wednesday, tomorrow. All right, guys? And ZachStrength.com is my free newsletter. Thanks for watching. Much love. I'm out of here. Peace.